Yo, what's up, everybody? It's your boy Showtime Doctor. Hey, this is gonna be your sort of Convalaria oh PvP so preview. Bad. I do definitely have a flavor for everything that's gonna go on, so... This is your basic PvP screen right here. Uh, you're gonna challenge. The one on the right is always the hardest. It's gonna get you 1.3 times the currency, which is the merit up here. You have a limit of 300 that you can get and per day and that's going to go into facilities and stuff so before we get into actual pvp i want to show you guys how that all works so this is your ranking i haven't done mine today i saved it specifically for this video uh, there's quests over here so the more pvp you do the lower you get to unlock stuff and eventually you'll be getting legendary trinkets legendary whisper tarot series i already got a couple legendaries so well worth doing pvp uh, it's only five times a day, and as far as I've seen, there's no way to buy additional tries. So once you're done, you're done. And these are all the quests. You see, I've claimed a good good amount of them already. It's going to get you more points. That's how that works. Now, facilities, that's an interesting case. Um, these are actually things that you level up your territory, which is the thing that all your opponents are trying to destroy when you're defending. I'll show you that more later. But remember I showed you, you can only get 300 points. I think the first upgrade was about 1,200. And you rank it up, that means <clears throat> your your things have more points that you can distribute more items. Uh, more HP for your critical buildings that they're trying to destroy within 10 rounds. And your characters and your various uh, items are trying to stop them. And there's different things here, like towers that are going to try to help you in that endeavor or hinder you if you're the attacker. So every time you level up a tower, you unlock a different rank. The ranks unlock different things. So this is a frosty tower. And basically inflicts move down, puts some debuffs up, and purges buffs. This tower can actually be really effective, especially from what I've seen. Because get two of these, put them somewhere towards the back or maybe up on the back part of the bridge. And it'll take two of the characters from the team basically out of the combat unless they have a really good, you know, dispel game and buff game. And so basically they'll only be moving one square a turn. They can't keep up with the rest of their team. And it'll be really hard for the opposing team to get into your base as long as those towers are up. You get the rank three, it's actually taking energy from them as well. Energy basically means they can't do special moves if they don't have any energy, which is pretty awesome. They're stuck to just basically auto attacking or things that don't use energy, which are usually not super effective skills. And you come down and you spend points to upgrade and unlock these. You can see the point now if I wanted to upgrade this. I highly recommend um, maybe when early, early, you can put a banner out. I wouldn't worry about leveling up the banner. The banners are pretty easily destructible unless you got some crazy setup. Stockade, I definitely get the rank, rank two. You're gonna want to put that on your bridge. Hunter Trap, really useful early PvP, and not that bad mid game either. Um, and then probably I would say avoid upgrading Outpost Tower. I'd take that bad if, back if I could. So, Stockades, Hunter Trap, maybe a banner early, like the first couple days. And then once you unlock Frost Tower, Burst Tower, go heavily into either one of these. Burst Tower, basically, it takes a tile around rather to get ready but eventually it'll be doing so much aoe damage at such long range because the passives upgrade their range and then you can upgrade their damage actually beat me <clears throat> was the first thing that ever beat me in uh, pvp was a really tanky team with two really nasty burst towers and like i was saying if you can get some snare in the mix dude you'll be destroying destroying teams on your defensive teams so that's how that works. Now to set up your actual defenses, you go to the set defenses screen in the lower right, lower left rather. So if you were coming into my base, your team would be in one of these spots, right? <clears throat> and then here's my team. You can move all the facilities, you can move all the characters. What happens is the offensive team, so if you're on attack, that's you. They're going to be trying to get to these two buildings and blow them up. And it probably takes at least a very good DPS character, at least two rounds or two attacks 
to kill one of these. And of course you gotta get to them. So you can go from the left, you can go from the right, or you could go on the bridge. Going on the bridge is a little bit risky because there's characters with knockbacks that can just knock you off the bridge. Doesn't matter how tank you are, how many buffs you are, you get knocked off the bridge, that's it. So in my defense, when people come up, they're gonna see the stockade, the traps are hidden. So they're gonna see the stockade, they're gonna think, okay, there's probably something there. They're gonna come in, and these are frost towers. Now, if you have burst towers, I would actually recommend you got the range upgrade, you put them like back here somewhere. But otherwise, if you don't have a range upgrade, you really want these towers to be doing stuff to the team early because PvP is usually decided in the first two or three rounds, right? Most, most gotcha games. So depending on what the enemy's gonna do, if they try to come up the bridge, this character has a knockback, this character has a knockback. And you can put more knockback characters if you want. There's up to six people on PvP and on offense. So they're gonna come, they're probably gonna stand on the blockade and either try to destroy it, or they're gonna try to go around it and my traps are gonna get them. When a trap gets you, that's instant the end of your turn, you can't do anything. So, I want my team to meet these guys here, potentially knock them off to either side. The Frost Towers are frosting the hell out of two of their teammates every turn. And the characters that I have deployed, as far as like PvP rankings and stuff and characters, we'll, we'll have a separate PvP characters guide. But just real quick, just so you can see them. Uh, you, you do want a healer in most cases, just because... Uh, they're gonna come in, they're gonna do burst damage. Healer's gonna help keep your team up as a bot team. Bot teams need that. So she's gonna go in, she's gonna be covering for the team, Maitha here. Uh, tanking, potentially knocking people off, does decent damage. Uh, Stormbreaker, she actually has a swing that she does when either she's hit or when she goes in, she has an AoE swing she can do, just butt loads of damage, especially if they're trapped right here. She's gonna walk up, potentially hit two, three people. So that's nasty. Cole. Cole does really great single target DPS. Actually, my very favorite farming character. Great character for PvE and offensive PvP. Defensive PvP, you have to be real careful what skills you equip her with. If you have a bunch of support items like the stealth that removes debuffs, the stealth's awesome in offense. On defense, she'll be standing right next to a low character. You know, you're like, take him out, and she'll stealth. And the stealth's cool, but at the same time, it's just like, I want you to be hitting things. So you really have to think about, I wish that we could have separate skills uh, that we could give the PvP versus the PvE characters. We don't have that. So uh, I would say definitely try to focus her on attack. Uh, don't give her potions. Don't give her use items. Give her stuff. Unless it's like uh, instant stuff, then that's okay. But if it's turn, stuff that takes turns to do, you know, just try to give her stuff where she's going to be doing damage because otherwise she'll just be running around the battlefield posing and they'll target her, they'll DPS her down and that's the uh, uh, um Gloria it shouldn't even be a question, she gives you a huge fat team buff that can't be dispelled has another big buff she can put up and she also has knockback so potentially she's knocking people off the bridge and then I don't remember. Uh, Barrel. She's just really good caster damage. She can put fire, fire down. She has a 150% damage non-crit. But if she does crit, it's even more damage. 150% damage, three square, magic burst, single target. So that's why that's what I do with that. You can set up your base however you want. Uh, I'll, I'll, I will actually show you guys in a separate video the most effective setup I've ever seen. So let me just put this back and you save it over here. Um, these are all the facilities you put down. You can see the point total. The higher your base level is, the more points you get over here. So you can put more, potentially put more stuff down. And then you can scroll and wherever you want it. So that's how you set your defenses up. Pretty unique, actually. I've actually, most games, PvP is kind of just like, okay, first turn, whoever goes first generally wins. This game, not really, not so much, so. Uh, and just to give you guys, that's cool, we had some guarding. It looks like Nocturno beat me, but Depression Tit did not, because Limit was reached. Glory Zero. <laughs> 
So you can't actually watch uh, within a couple days all your attacks and defenses. I have a couple saved, which I will show you, but I'd rather do one in real time just to show you guys. So go ahead and attack Chatty over here. <laughs> Actually, it should be a challenging video. Um, as far as the PvP tier list goes, which is a separate video I'm gonna do on my side, and I'm not talking about the bots necessarily. I'm just talking about offensive units right now. This is a top tier team offensively. You got long range right here with this character, Lash, who's top tier, I don't care what anyone says. A lot of people say she's like, okay. Lash is freaking awesome. Uh, Cole, like I said, top tier. Mytha's top tier. Glorious top tier. Stormbreaker for PvP, I would consider it just below top tier, because she's a bit squishy. And then healer, I'm sure there's a better healer, but Angel's pretty damn good. Now, as far as bots go defensively, this dude, Dantelion, is actually top tier, I would give him. He has a really long range single target. Pretty gnarly deeps. Uh, this guy for candlelight is very underrated i would say just below top tier because he has a lot of combat heals as well as regular healing depending on how you build them i don't know exactly how this guy built his we'll see uh fake out i heard he's really good but he has to be max maxed so like it's not possible in the closed beta to be maxed maxed right now but he's potentially in his like 30s i didn't see i guess he's 24 here but uh, this character suppression, just a really good tanky unit that slows stuff down. If you're just trying to outlast teams, he's a good pick. But otherwise, as far as defense and stuff, I, I generally wouldn't use him. Tempest is actually really good. Uh, I haven't seen him in PvP, so I'm going to be curious to see this. But PvE, he's a freaking awesome character. And then this guy, Ballista, he has a knockback as well. Pretty good DPS. I've seen him on a lot of PvP defensive teams just because his range increases when he doesn't attack. So by the time he gets down to the combat, he's got like a passive three range and then whatever his skills are adding on top of that. Pretty crazy. You see how he set up his towers. He's got outpost towers. I don't really care for outpost towers. But let's go ahead and start here. So you choose, you can actually bring your tactics, which is pretty cool. There's Gloria's buff. Let me see, I'm gonna try to stay out the way of the UI. Okay, so what I tend to generally do, I go up. I'm not scared of these towers. If these were burst towers, I would probably play it differently because there'd be a bunch of AoE coming down. But since there isn't, I'm gonna go ahead and start with the buffs. This is Mypa's heal. Slash buff, attack 2, 20% attack, defense 1, I think that's 10 or 15% defense. Now Gloria as well, she has a buff, you can see what it does there. Attack and damage reduction 2, 20% less damage done to your team. Also puts energy up for everybody, so Maitha just got back most of her energy. Now, Stormbreaker, I can choose with her because I'm a little bit cautious because I'm wondering if they have any traps up. They don't have a counter to her necessarily because a counter would be a roguey like character, a destroyer here. So, what I'm gonna do, she has an attack buff. I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna give the attack buff to Lash because Lash is my sniper. First round, she can potentially take out a unit. Uh, so the way my Cole is built, Cole is pretty much, she has her double attacks. I have Assault on her so she can instantly gain one movement, or two movement rather, as well as crit damage buff and crit buff, 15% crit chance, 15% crit damage. And it's instant, so my turn isn't consumed. I also have an item on her, Knight's Faith, that'll give a random buff, random level 2 and speed, which is an additional movement square. I'm going to give that to my Lash because Lash needs to get in there. She just needs to be within five units of somebody. Now I see here, I can potentially go in here and kill this tower. So I'm gonna hit my tactic. And this tactic right here, Pursuit Order, basically as long as they're attacking, they get attack two, which is 20% more and they can act again, but they have to get the attack off. So if this dude has a trap anywhere between that trap and here, I'm out of luck. So, we'll see here, but I'm gonna try to just DPS this tower down. As long as I attack, 
there was a trap like I showed you, so out of luck there. But now what I can do, I've given Lash all that extra attack. So look here. Uh, let me show you that skill. Whip of Blame. This is what makes Slash ridiculous. I wish I'd have shown you her gear because she also has a thing that adds additional damage per hit. More like percentage damage, but it feels like a dot, so... 60% of her damage to all enemies in a straight line. Now, keep in mind, I never found a good staff. I still have a blue staff for my caster characters. And to be honest, I don't think I even equipped Lash, to be honest. So I think Lash is actually running around without a staff. Which is a mistake on my part, or a low-level staff. But just keep this in mind. Imagine if she had like an epic staff or even a legendary staff. 60% damage, 5,000. Pierce also deals piercing damage equal to 30% of the character's magic attack. So I'm gonna come up here. I'm gonna say I don't like you, Dandelion. And look at that damage. This was the hardest person I could find. Now watch this. We ain't done. And that's game as far as I'm concerned right there. Hole already got in. That's a passive she has. She gets hit the first time. She warps behind him. She backstabs him and she gets a dodge. Gnarly. So this battle's over already. If Cole's already that deep in. There we go. Her thing, it dispels debuffs really good against the problem with though is uh she goes last and the towers generally target first if their towers worth the damn but now that we're here i'm just gonna do everything i can to get in their base they're gonna go after cole sometimes i give the dps buffs to cole sometimes i give it to Stormbreaker. That just depends. So, also Lash has utility heal on her. She can block healing. And I think I gave her an item. Yeah, instant does piercing damage. So if someone's close, they can do that. This blocks healing right here. Not that much damage, but still pretty awesome. And then now that Cole's this far in, I'm gonna go ahead. Give her a crit. Now on offense, that stealth thing that I was telling you about, this one, it's pretty good. It gives her crit 5, so basically guarantees her that next attack crits. She goes invisible, so if she's near a bunch of things, in most cases they can't see her. I've only had them see her one time, and I couldn't figure out why, so. But now I'm like, yo, I'm just gonna start killing dudes, so. And Cole's passive, as long as she's killing something, she gets an extra turn. From the side or the back. And then if you combine that with the act again, you manage to kill three things, just just like that in one in one round. That's yeah, not quite fair. Bots don't know what to do. And we'll get over here. Mytha finally gets her chance to shine a bit. Little counter. Should have someone. Now imagine that a uh, Stormbreaker got, and there was a character here, a tower here, and maybe a character here. She'd be hitting three people with this. This is why she's top tier in PvP. She can do it up to four times. If she killed someone else, that would have been a four time spin. Ridiculous. So here, go ahead and hit that cut. So you can see, not a lot of damage. That Lash does has a 30% tick of her bonus damage as well. So pretty crazy. So now the healer doesn't really need to be doing anything. I'm gonna just hit towers with her. Now the way that this works is, the more characters you kill in 10 turns, the more base destruction, uh, the more points you get for your PvP conquest. So you want to be taking out as much stuff as you can, even after you've won. Get your DPS up. 
because you want to take all this out within a couple turns. So this is back, so I'm going to have Cole go ahead and attack twice. Should blow this up. And this is always funny when you hear the blow up sound for this little small thing. You think half the city's coming down. <laughs> And then Lash, like I said, she's a sniper. Gnarly deeps. Our healer gets the big finishing blow. That's a round of PvP, my friends. I'll show you guys in another video uh, an offense I did with a really effective defensive thing you guys can build towards. Yo, I'm Showtime Doctor. If you found my YouTube channel, hit like and subscribe. Hope you enjoyed the content. Uh, we'll be doing plenty more videos for Sword of Convalaria, so stay tuned for those. And I'll catch you again in the next one. Peace out.